Hey, what's up there, YouTube? Uh, my name is Evan, and today I'm going to be talking about my new crossover unit. I'm switching from a DBX drive rack to a Super X Pro uh, by Behringer. It's a two, three, and four way crossover. So, this does it's a high precision stereo two way, three way, mono, four way crossover with limiters and really the only difference between the two Behringer also has another like a two and a three way crossover which is uh, the model right below this one and really I think the only difference was maybe $40, $40 in price so if I ever wanted to I could make this into a four way but the manual is, is basically really ba the manual doesn't really explain like where your outputs go and your inputs and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to show you basically the the tip a tip on this unit, and it's real ba it's real easy to figure out. So you have see how it says mono four way, and then it says stereo three way, and then it says stereo two way right there. So on the back they tell you exactly what inputs you're going to be using and what inputs uh, you're going to, what outputs you're going to be using. In my case, I have two top cabs. I have two RCF 315A and those those are amplified top cabs. So they're internally crossed over, right? So one amplifier is being used for the top tweeter and then another amplifier is being used for my mids, which is a 15 uh, so, and then I have two subwoofers, which are being powered by a, a QSC amplifier, a two-way uh, stereo QSC amplifier. So today I'm just going to show you base, that basic setup so you can see what a stereo two-way is going to look like. And you can also apply this same concept to the three-way and the mono four-way once you figure out what's going on here. So let's let's look at these inputs. So see, so I'm gonna be using stereo two-way. Let's see, let me put it down like this. So I'm gonna be using stereo two-way, which means that I'm gonna start off with my input, right? So see how it says stereo two-way? I'm gonna have my left input here, and then I'll have my right input here. Before I do all that though, I'm gonna I'm gonna select stereo two-way. So I'm gonna have this one pressed in, and this one is gonna be out, okay? So my left and my right channel from my mixer are gonna go into these inputs, because it says input here at the bottom. See, because it correlates with stereo two-way. And then I'm gonna have my high range go in here, right? And this is gonna be um, my output to my powered speaker, my left powered speaker, my two-way powered speaker. And then the same thing over here, this is gonna be my right two-way powered speaker. So it's that high. And then it says not used. My stereo two-way is not going to be used here. So I'm, nothing's going to go in here and nothing's going to go in here either. And then for my subs, my left channel sub output is going to go here. That's going to go to my left channel on my uh, sub subwoofer. Um, like if you had a powered subwoofer, you could do that. And also the same thing on this side too. So low. This is gonna go my this is my right channel low. So left out right out to my amplifier for my subs. Now if you just apply the same concept to stereo three-way, it'd be different. You'd have your high, your mid output, and your low output. That just breaks it up into three different bands. You'd have your input as well. Same thing goes for high, mid on this side, low, input. The tricky one is when you get into the mono four-way. So you'd use high, high mid. That's not used. That's not used either. 
that's not used, and then you have your low, mid, and your low. So you're dividing it into four sections, and you'd only, in this case, you'd only be using one output from a mixer, really, or a summed output from a mixer to divide it up into four sections. So if you see how that works, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I'm just gonna use a normal, I might play around with this summed, summed but I'll probably keep it normal. Um, so I can just have the stereo. So I'm gonna show you kind of probably in the second section how all the front panel works, but don't be kind of like freaked out about all this stuff. I know Behringer didn't really do a good job with their manual and explaining this. And I think that might be calculated. Maybe people, you know, will look this stuff up on the internet. You know how they kind of purposely make iPhones complicated so you look this stuff up on how all this works because everything is digital nowadays, internet stuff. So it's real easy. Don't freak out on this stuff. So now you have a guide. So I'll see you in the second part here in a second. So here it is guys, this is uh, the basic setup that I have for my stereo two-way. Uh, you can kind of see what's going on here, but basically, um, you know, I have my high. That right there is my high output that's going to go to one of these speakers here. See that speaker? Um, then my other high output that right there goes to the other speaker sitting there this output goes to one channel of my qsc amp and the other one does the same goes to the other channel these um come right off my mixer and that's basically what that looks like and then i have it in stereo two-way stereo two-way with one pressed and one not depressed so I'm going to show you what the front looks like here and how to tune all this stuff here in a second. Alright guys, so I'm back and I wanted to go ahead and just show you the front of house system that we're using right now. We're just using a couple of 8 inch marathons that I have. These are powered um, and everything on the back is, is zeroed out. They're all uh, zero gains and zero trebles. Zero, um, everything's flat. Then I have um, various subwoofers, but this is the one I'll be using for this test. This is a Sirwin Vega Earthquake Junior. So, um, and that's why I have this amplifier, the, the rack mount amplifier that I have, is that I, I have subs that are, are usable for different environments. So that's why I have it set up this way. But I was gonna show you uh, what all this stuff does. So I just, I use a low cut anyway like for my subs uh, just so that they don't go below 25 hertz and kind of get too hot or anything like that um, this knob here basically adjusts your input that comes from your mixer so if you want a little more volume you could actually turn this up but I keep that at zero um, and then you have the same thing on the other side now basically in this mode what it does is when it knows that it's in this sort of two channel stereo mode it indicates with LEDs which um, knobs or which uh, potentiometers you're going to be using so in this case this one here is for my sub so for my for that particular sub I like to keep it at about um, 60 uh, Hertz and lower and I'll show you what that sounds like here in a second but I like to keep it about 60 Hertz and the same thing on the other side this is all stereo mode, so that's gonna be basically mirrored. And then all these are not gonna be used. I'm not gonna use a delay unless I really need to. Uh, this is my gain uh, for my subwoofer, okay? And then also this is my gain for uh, my top cabs. And so what's really cool about this system and one of the reasons I wanted it is because I can mute things out. So like if I wanted to mute out my sub and just listen to my tops I can do that right so in in order to do that I would just mute that out right and then I would just play my loop and I'd be able to listen just to my um, my top cabs so let's see um, I'm gonna show you how all this stuff works here so I have just kind of a stupid loop 
that uh, I found on one of my, I'm not even gonna use this limiter. I'm not gonna use it. I, I kinda know when my stuff is clipping or anything like that, so here we go. We're gonna start with just a basic loop here. I'm just gonna turn it up on my, my mixer here. And I just have a loop, so don't. Okay, so there's my loop. So first I'm just gonna show you what the mute system does. So I'm gonna mute out my tops. So now I just hear my sub, right? And I'm just running it off this channel right now. In the future I'm gonna have stereo, so I'm gonna run this and this other side as well for my subs. This one here. But see how you can you can hear that the you see that? So that's 60 hertz. That's why I keep it about 60, because you get that punch and you get that low end. If you wanted, you go to all the all the way down to 44 hertz. And then you get that like no no punch at all. But I like a little punch in there, so I put it about 60. What you don't want with your subs is to go too high. Cause then you're getting you're getting mid bass in there. So I keep it about right there. And I do the same thing for the other side. Cool thing, I can mute this out now. Alright, this is my gain for my sub if I want to turn up my sub. If I want, I can mute my sub and I can turn on my high. That's my game. So that's pretty cool, don't you think? Same thing on this side. You can unmute it. So there you guys have it. That's just kind of an overview of how this thing works. And the same uh, philosophy and concept can be applied if you're using it, uh, the, um, um, what is it? The two, three, or four way, four way mono. Cool, so uh, I hope you guys like that um, little tutorial on this unit. From what I can tell so far, it really sounds nice. Uh, it actually sounds better than my DBX. And um, that's saying a lot. DBX is a pretty major brand. It has a few other functions, like you can invert the phase, right? You can add a limiter on some of this stuff. There's even like a an in and out. It's like a, a horn mechanism, whatever it is. I'm not going to use any of that. I'm just going to use this for its crossover property. So um, if you like the video, uh, please give it a thumbs up and all that good stuff. And um, y'all have a good day. Thanks.